Hear the reading of the gospel. Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good evening and welcome to Cross Lanes United Methodist Church. We are here to celebrate Christmas Eve, and I'm so happy uh, that I got to see many of you today celebrate Christmas Eve in the other ways that we have made possible, um, our journey to the manger prayer stations and our Vespers service. But tonight we come to our full worship experience, and in so doing, we remember that throughout this season, we've been hearing the good news in all the Gospels, in Matthew Mark, Luke, and John, and we have been grateful for this season, at least I have. This is a season in which we expectantly wait for good news, and this, this is a year we have needed good news. It has come to us in the form of hope, love, joy, and peace. And through those Sundays of Advent leading up to this Christmas Eve service, we have remembered that in God, we can believe even in difficult times. silent, even then we believe. We believe in the 
presence of Emmanuel, God with us. This is the night we celebrate that the Holy One came in human form to be light in our lives, to speak to us, touch us, comfort us, and call us. ignited the flame of hope, love, joy, and peace within us. Let us glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Amen. Hear this reading from Isaiah 52, 7 through 10. This comes from the Common English Bible. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a messenger who proclaims peace who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, God rules. Listen, your lookouts lift their voice. They sing out together. Right before their eyes, they see the Lord returning to Zion. Break into song together, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people and has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in full view of all nations. 
all the ends of the earth have seen our God's victory. And there were shepherds riding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you this day is born a Savior, and this shall be a sign to you. You will find the babe lying in a manger. Then suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of angels, saying, Glory to God, and on earth peace, good will towards men. And the shepherds came unto Bethlehem, and found Mary with her husband Joseph, and the baby who was lying in a manger. The shepherds made known to others the saying which was told them about the child, and all that heard this story wondered at those things which were told them. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. When the babe who was called Jesus became a man, he stood one day on a mountain before a great multitude of people, and he said, Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek of they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart. 
Let your mind now rest at ease and do not be dismayed. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power where we had gone astray. A good news of comfort and joy. A good news of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came and to uncertain shepherds bright good news of the same how Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name a good news of comfort and joy a good news of comfort and joy said don't be afraid on this cold winter's night to us is born a savior to make our future bright to free all those who trust in him from satan's power and might a good news of comfort and joy a good news Every year at Cross Lane United Methodist Church, I invite the children, and children at heart, to come to our Christmas Eve worship in their pajamas. So while we've made some adjustments to the service, it actually feels pretty traditional to me to gather around a storybook in my jammies with all of you. Of course, in other ways, it doesn't feel traditional at all. I had to record this days before Christmas, which was weird and disjointed. Um, this will be my first time in the 32 years of my life that I will not see my parents or grandparents on Christmas Day. This will be the first time I'm not sitting in church when I hear the Luke 2 story again. And the first time in nearly a decade, I won't be behind the pulpit for it. And yet, we believe, even when faced with untraditional times and in untraditional places, God is with us. 
This is our fifth service in the I Believe Even When series, which has helped us throughout Advent make bold claims about what our faith is capable of, even when things are hard. In these weeks, as we read through the origin stories of Jesus in the four Gospels, we proclaimed our belief in the Advent themes together. We believe in hope, even when it means betting on big change. We believe in love, even when it is risky. We believe in joy, even when it seems far away. And we believe in peace, even when we have to look for signs. Tonight, we retell the Luke 2 origin story, perhaps the most famous and oft-quoted birth narrative in the Gospels. In it, Mary and Joseph are summoned to Bethlehem in order to be counted as part of a census. While they are traveling, it comes time for Mary to deliver. When she does, she does so in a borrowed room with repurposed furniture, and Jesus emerges in a humble setting. This long-awaited child is immediately loved, wrapped with intentional care so that he can rest warmly, safely, snug. His parents watch over him adoringly, but nothing that good ever stays a secret. And so across town, the shepherds who were abiding the fields that night are visited by a host of angels who sing, Gloria in excelsis Deo. One of the angels stops singing long enough to explain to these frightened men that heaven has come to earth, that all which they have heard promised in the faith of old has been fulfilled, not on the throne, not in the temple, but in a manger. And so the shepherds go looking for the manger that was described to them, leaving their work to the interns. And they appear as uncles appear unannounced but welcome, inexperienced but excited, lovingly, joyously, and with great admiration for the baby in their midst. When they leave, they are different than when they arrived. Something has happened to them which they cannot describe, only accept. They embrace the mystery of this tiny creature who is God and who is human by doing the only thing they could do. They return to their work, telling the story as they went, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. They experienced God with us, Emmanuel. And that strange encounter with the divine, which is at once personal and global, it, it changed something for them, as it does for all of us. You know, nothing about that story in Luke 2 is traditional. Mary and Joseph don't have a traditional marriage. Babies aren't traditionally born in the company of animals. Infants are not traditionally, traditionally laid in feeding troughs to sleep. Heavenly choirs don't traditionally appear in remote fields. Shepherds are not the traditional medium for God's good news. And yet, in untraditional times and in untraditional places, God was with them. The shepherds aren't mentioned again outside of Luke 2, and I have always wondered if they kept in touch with the Holy Family. Did they help them outline their course into Egypt? Did they come to Jesus' bar mitzvah or ask for copies of his school pictures? Did they ever meet him in Galilee and go fishing for the weekend? I can't help but think that the shepherds would have kept a close eye on Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. To check in every once in a while that all of it had not been a fever dream. That they would be searching for the rest of their days for the words to better describe what they had seen and heard. And I like to think that perhaps they were there that day on the plain, as Cynthia Ryland put it, near the Galilee water when Jesus preached his most famous sermon. Now, granted, it would have been a heck of a trip, over 250 miles. But after the shepherds heard Jesus had almost starved himself to death in the Jordan River Valley and had been chased to a cliff in Judea, Maybe they had to go check in on him, trailing behind him by a week or two until Jesus stopped 
for the Sabbath and the shepherds could catch up just in time to see Jesus descend the mountain and give the crowd the words that those shepherds had looked for since the nativity. Blessed are the poor, those who mourn, the meek, the peacemakers, the hungry, the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Because with those words, I think the shepherds would get it. They were smart in the beginning to fear a confrontation with God, but they need not fear, as the angel had said, because God came to redeem and to save, not to destroy. They need not fear because God came to bring good news of great joy to his people. They need not fear because God came to deliver grace upon grace and to do so with preferential treatment for those who suffer most. I know, <laughs> I know not much of this feels traditional apart from our jammies. And yet God is with us. Good news is still breaking in. It may not be in the places we are used to looking or among the people we are used to hearing it from, but salvation is still unfolding. Hope, love, joy, and peace are still coming to fruition. And if we are willing to share all we have seen and heard while we continue to look for Jesus, if we are willing to go on the hint of his presence into those dangerous and political places he likes to hang out, we might just find that this has not been a fever dream. In fact, it is exactly the kind of place and time God chooses to work in. Untraditional. Gloria in Excelsis Deo. Cross Lanes United Methodist Church is an active faith community committed to services that share God's vision for hope, love, joy, and peace. If you feel called to give a financial gift and to be a part of the life-giving ministries at Cross Lanes United Methodist Church, go to crosslanesumc.org and find the giving tab where you will see a plethora of instructions about donating to those life-giving ministries.
called Advent, we have, um, we have explored ways that we believe even when we are in a difficult season. We have explored ways that we can believe even when we can't see the end to our struggle. Ways that we believe even when we don't have words for our sorrow. We believe in hope, love, joy, and peace. And we believe that God will do what God has promised. We believe that we are not built for what is, but for what can be. We believe, we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to transform what we know into something beautiful and holy. We believe that even when we cannot gather and the body is stretched, we are church. We believe that this light, the light of Christ, will go on and on. This evening, you will hear Silent Night. And as you do, I hope that you will take your small Christ candle in your home and light it. Whether you're by yourself or you're with uh, members of your family, I hope that this will be a time when you can hold up a candle and be in its warmth. Maybe you picked one up here uh, throughout the season of Advent, or maybe you're a guest with us and, and you are, um, you're just using a candle that you have in a house or even a flashlight. The point really isn't which candle you use. The point is that as we sing together, as we still our hearts at once, we remember that we can believe even when, because the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Let us see. 
and brothers, you've heard the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ is born. Now go forth as witnesses to all you have seen and heard. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>